So I want to discuss how high blood sugar has the potential of destroying your organs and exactly what you should do about it, okay? It's called glucotoxicity, the toxicity of glucose, which is sugar. So there's a couple things that happen. Number one, you get a massive uh, oxidation effect. Oxidation is similar to rust on your car, okay? So you're getting this breakdown of this material. This can happen in the arteries, in your brain, in your nerves. And then what happens, your body starts healing it with uh, proteins, calcium, cholesterol as a plaque, okay? So you start getting plaquing. That's the Band-Aid that happens after oxidation. And by the way, diabetics that consume more antioxidants from real food um, can lower the effect of this, okay? Then we have glycation. What is that? Glycation is the effect of heating up and combining glucose with a protein. For example, if you were to eat barbecued ribs, for example, you would get glycation. Glycation has the effect of altering your proteins in the body and making them unusable and creating a lot of damage throughout the tissues. And this can happen anywhere in the body. But there are four main organs that are affected when you have high sugar. Number one is the kidney. Sugar is very damaging to the kidney. Eventually the person ends up on dialysis because it will literally destroy the kidney. When you have glucose in the urine, for example, because you have so much sugar coming out, your body is trying to get rid of it as a toxic material. But all that glucose is basically destroying the, the filter. The kidney is a filter, the filter's blood, and it ends up as urine, uh, and then you can't filter anymore, and then you actually need dialysis. Okay, number two, the eyes. Uh, number one, it'll affect the tiny blood vessels in the back of the eye that feed the retina, okay, which is a nerve that goes right into your brain. So the retina, it has optical tissue and it's an extension of your brain sticking out there. And there's all these little blood vessels that it needs to feed that nerve tissue. Well, high sugar destroys the blood vessels, which then destroy the nerves. And that's why the end product of having diabetes, you end up going blind. Okay, so it affects the retina. It affects the pressure in the eye as glaucoma. It affects the lens as cataracts. And maybe you have personal experience when your blood sugars are even low because the insulin is high, pushing them down. Um, sometimes like you're blurry, you can't see as well. Next one is the vascular system. Okay, I'm talking about the blood vessels uh, to the heart, to other parts of the tissue. Uh, the vascular system becomes stiff and you get oxidation within the wall of the arteries. And that's where you see the plaque. That's where you see the clots that form that can eventually turn into a stroke. Um, but it's the glucotoxicity that destroys the vascular system. And this is why diabetics end up with so many heart problems. Um, so we have the effect of the arteries directly, we have the muscle, and we also have the electrical system of the heart, so they have arrhythmias. Okay, next one is the nerves, okay? And the brain. I'm considering this as one, but the nerves are affected. Primarily the blood vessels or the capillaries that feed the nerves, okay? Starting off in the peripheral nerves in your fingertips and your toes, okay, on the bottom of the feet. They'll, you'll start feeling tingling, numbness, burning, um, maybe just pain, and then just complete, you can't feel it anymore. Uh, what's happening is you're destroying the nerves. The remedy for that is vitamin B1 in the form of a fat-soluble B1. It's called benthotamine. If you have peripheral neuropathy, if you take that, you can reverse that effect. And the reason for that is that we're, we're dealing with oxidation and vitamin B1 is like an antioxidant. So it can protect the complications from the high sugar. It can affect the autonomic nervous system and create a condition called gastroparesis, which is basically you eat food and it, it doesn't digest that fast. It's very slow going through the digestive tract. And also the valves on top of the stomach and even the bottom of the stomach is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Okay, that's part of the nervous system that can get destroyed. Then we have this thing called the brain gets destroyed. The vascular system that goes in the brain, the oxygen shuts down, your brain actually shrinks when you have high sugar. You destroy the neurons, it's called diabetes type three. And then there goes the memory, there goes the learning, there goes the cognition, but it's really the toxic effect of this glucose that actually starts the whole cycle. All right, now, you have diabetes, right? Okay. Well, you just don't wake up one day and get diabetes. You have prediabetes before that. And a prediabetes, you have uh, roughly 
uh, fasting sugar is between 100 and 125, okay? And then when it gets above that, 126 or greater, on two different tests, you're considered a diabetic, okay? So diabetes is too much sugar or it's hyperglycemia, all right? So then you take medication. The question you have to ask yourself is, what is the medication doing with that high sugar? Is it making it evaporate? No, it's cramming it from the blood into some other place, okay? So it's gonna be storing it as fat around the organs. So really we're just taking one problem and putting the problem somewhere else. It doesn't solve any problem. This is why you have to keep taking the medication over and over and over again. Um, but what happens before the prediabetes? That's the big question, okay? Because sometimes when you go to your doctor, they'll test your sugars and they say, well, you're pre-diabetic. You might wanna watch your weight, right? Um, go to a dietitian, and then we'll check you in six months, okay? Come back six months later, it might be fine. Good, come back in a year, come back later, and oh, yep, you're officially diabetic, we're gonna put you on medication, okay? But this whole thing can be prevented because there's something that occurs before even the prediabetes, okay? Because it takes like 10 years for this to happen. There's high insulin, okay? Hyperinsulinemia, that's what it's called. They never test your fasting insulin, only the fasting glucose. Big, huge mistake. I wanna show you something, this is very interesting. I'll put this article down below. A high fasting plasma insulin concentration, basically high blood fasting insulin, predicts type two diabetes, independent of insulin resistance, evidence for a pathogenic role in relative hyperinsulinemia. Okay, what does all that mean? It means that high insulin can predict diabetes, okay? In order to prevent diabetes, you need to know what happens before diabetes, okay? All right, so what do we do next, okay? Well, we go to the expert. We go to Google, okay, Dr. Google, and we type in hyperinsulinemia, and on the wiki page, you'll see some data on this right here, okay? And I'm gonna go directly down to the causes, and this is what they say. Four things. I'm glad they narrowed it down. Uh, neoplasm, that's a tumor. Uh, pancreatic cancer, all right? Polycystic ovarian syndrome, and trans fats. Okay, now what are they missing? A high carbohydrate diet, okay? Because insulin responds to glucose, all right? That's what it does. What happens, you eat a high carbohydrate diet, insulin gets triggered, and it pushes the blood sugars down. That's the mechanism. So the high carbohydrate diet is what's really behind this, but they don't mention it. Anytime you try to solve a problem and you're operating off of missing information, especially something like that, you are not gonna be able to solve this problem. High insulin comes before hyperglycemia. So what happens is you have high sugar, okay? The body's gonna then uh, start protecting the cells by creating something called insulin resistance. The high insulin is keeping the sugar in check for many years. You're having symptoms though because there's a lot of problems with high insulin. Just as many as high sugar, okay? Like frequent urination, thirst, blurred vision, belly fat, fatigue, forgetfulness, inflammatory conditions, and the list goes on and on and on and on, right? So then you develop insulin resistance sooner or later. And now what happens, your insulin goes down a little bit in the blood, okay? It's going up in other parts of the tissue to compensate, but in the blood it goes down and then the sugar starts going up because you don't have enough insulin to push it down. Okay, and this gets worse and worse to the point where you start having uh, this higher level of sugar. And realize, in the beginning of diabetes type two, we not only have high sugar, but we also have high insulin. And so medically, their goal is to lower the blood sugar, but they're not focused on the insulin because that would mean acknowledging that high carbohydrate diets are behind this, but that's just one huge connection they don't wanna validate, okay? They don't wanna acknowledge High carb causes high insulin, okay? There is a tremendous amount of damage in the body well before you get diabetes, okay? There's oxidation in the arteries, there's things brewing, there's all sorts of things happening. 
All right, so now what is the solution? Very simple, go to the experts, okay? Go to Google, type in uh, the best diet for diabetes and just take what the first thing that shows up, okay? That's from Hopkins University. For years, people with diabetes were warned to avoid sweets. But what research understands, I just love that when they use that, when research, but they don't tell us what research. Research understands about diabetes, nutrition has changed. Total carbohydrates are what counts. It was once assumed that honey, candy, and other sweets would raise blood sugar levels faster and higher than would fruits, vegetables, and starchy foods such as potatoes, pasta, and whole grain bread. But this isn't true. As long as the sweets are eaten with a meal and balanced with other foods in your meal. Wow, I didn't know that. Whew, man, I could, I could have my cake and eat it too now. Great. Although different types of carbohydrates affect your blood sugars differently, it's the total amount of carbohydrates that really matters. So guys, it doesn't really matter if you do white sugar or candy or fruit or grain. It's all about carbohydrates. It doesn't matter anymore that based on your research, how fast that these foods spike your blood sugar. So ignore the glycemic index, okay? Have your cake and eat it too. Sweets count as carbohydrates in your meal. The trick is substituting small portions of sweets for other carbohydrates, such as bread, tortillas, rice, crackers, cereal, fruit, juice, milk, yogurt, and potatoes in your meals. All right, so now that you know that, just realize I have a very dry sense of humor. I'm being very sarcastic. Um, this is not the correct information. I put a link down below, if you're new to my channel, of how to do healthy keto and intermittent fasting. You need to go on a low carbohydrate diet but you also have to be aware of the toxicity of glucose to various tissues of your body. And thank you so much for watching. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now, and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.